VOS Television, your digital for Pan African News Network. I am Abigail Lukwande and this is Africa Now. Former Zimbabwe footballer Charles Johan has died in South Africa at the age of 48. The defender who moved to South Africa in 1996 and played for top flight side Wit was killed in an apparent carjacking incident. His body was found in Soweto on Monday, but there were speculations that he died on Saturday night. Now, barely a month after he overthrew democratically elected Rochma Kabore, Burkina Faso's military leader on Wednesday was sworn in as transitional president in a televised ceremony in the capital, Ouagadougou. Lieutenant Colonel Henry Damiba took an oath before the country's top constitutional body to preserve, respect, uphold, and defend the constitution, the nation's law, and a fundamental act of key decisions approved by the military. Damiba, who opened his speech with a minute silence for those killed in the fight against Islamist militants, over the last six years promised to deal with a mountain insecurity. Now France announced it is withdrawing its troops from Mali where they had been fighting jihadists. A joint statement issued ahead of an EU-Africa summit in Brussels said it desires to continue to engage in the fight against terrorism in the Sahel. France has about 4,300 troops in the Sahel region including 2,400 in Mali, a former French colony. And leaders from countries that have been suspended from the African Union due to forceful military takeovers of power will not attend the African Union-European Union Summit, set to begin on Thursday in Brussels. This will be the first EU-AU summit in four years. Officials said the meeting would touch on an investment package to address the urgent challenges of climate change and insufficient health care in Africa, as well as the unresolved issues of intellectual property rights for vaccine production in Africa. And Uganda has suspended the mandatory COVID-19 testing of all passengers arriving at the country's Entebbe International Airport. Since October last year, all passengers were required to test on arrival, whether they had a valid negative PCR test or not. The health ministry said a decline in positive cases being identified at the airport and a reduction in the threat of variants of concern were behind the decision. This is your Digital Force Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. Business and more coming your way after the break. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back in business. Tour operators in Tanzania have strongly protested the move to install cable cars on Africa's highest mountain, calling on members of parliament to intervene. The operator said the plan would degrade Mount Kilimanjaro's prime tourism status and the environment. They also called on President Samia Sulu Hassan to intervene, saying the cable car facility will reduce incomes for expedition planners and other stakeholders. Now, due to regional sanctions on Mali, the West African country has defaulted on over $93 million in interest and principal payments since January. Data from the West African Monetary Union's debt agency showed on Wednesday. The regional bloc imposed border closure and financial restrictions on the country over the delay of election by the country's military junta. Still in business, Ethiopia's biggest sugar factory, which is located in an area where Oromo Liberation Army rebels are active, has been unable to operate for a week because of security concerns. Ethiopian Sugar Corporation spokesman Reza Dameke said insecurity in the area meant it was impossible to deliver fuel needed to run the harvesting machines and other equipment to the Fincher factory. Fincher factory has an annual production capacity of 270,000 tons. And the government of Ghana has launched a landscape restoration project that is aimed at strengthening the integration of the country's national resource management. The $103.4 million project was launched in August of 2021. When completed, the project is expected to benefit 250,000 farmers, miners and artisanal small-scale miners in targeted savanna and cocoa forest landscapes. And away from business. The Minister of Transport and Public Works, Jacob Hara, has warned that his ministry will, stand, will soon start taking to cut contractors who produce substandard work on the roads of Malawi. Hara said the government is in the process of acquiring a machine that would test the standard of roads for transparency's sake. The transport minister said there has been a lot of theft of public funds in the road construction. And that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. 
I am Abigail Okwade. Thanks for watching. Thank you.